Hello and welcome back to Chef Poetry. Today I'm going to dive straight back into The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. And we're going to find out why the Mariner's decision to shoot the albatross with his crossbow, apart from just being rude, was a bad idea. This is part two. The sun now rose upon the right, out of the sea came he, still hid in mist, and on the left went down into the sea. And the good south wind still blew behind, but no sweet bird did follow, nor any day for food or play came to the mariner's hollow. And I had done an hellish thing, and it would work him woe, for all averred I had killed the bird that made the breeze to blow. Ah, wretch, said they, the bird to slay, that made the breeze to blow. Nor dim nor red, like God's own head, the glorious sun uprist. Then all averred I had killed the bird that brought the fog and mist. "'Twas right, said they, such birds to slay that bring the fog and mist. The fair breeze blew, the white foam flew, the furrow followed free. We were the first that ever burst into that silent sea. Down dropped the breeze, the sails dropped down, twas sad as sad could be, and we did speak only to break the silence of that sea. All in a hot and copper sky, the bloody sun at noon, right up above the mast did stand, no bigger than the moon. Day after day, day after day, we stuck, nor breath nor motion, as idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean. Water, water everywhere, and all the boards did shrink. Water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. The very deep did rot, O oh Christ, that ever this should be. Yea, slimy things did crawl with legs upon the slimy sea. About, about, in reel and rout, the death fires danced at night. The water, like a witch's oils, burnt green and blue and white. And sudden dreams assured were of the spirit that plagued us so. Nine fathom deep he had followed us from the land of mist and snow. And every tongue through utter drought was withered at the root. We could not speak no more than if we had been choked with soot. Ah, well a day, what evil looks had I from old and young. Instead of the cross, the albatross about my neck was hung. Part three. There passed a weary time, each throat was parched and glazed each eye. A weary time, a weary time, how glazed each weary eye, when looking westward I beheld a something in the sky. At first it seemed a little speck, and then it seemed a mist. It moved and moved, and took at last a certain shape, I wist. A speck, a mist, a shape, I wist, and still it neared and neared. As if it dodged a water sprite, it plunged and tapped and veered. With throats unslaked, with black lips baked, we could not laugh nor wail. Through utter drought, all dumb we stood. I bit my arm, I sucked the blood, and cried, A sail! A sail! With throats unslaked, with black lips baked, agape they heard me call. Gramercy, they for joy did grin, and all at once their breath drew in as they were drinking all. See, see, I cried, she tacks no more, hither to work us weal. Without a breeze, without a tide, she steadies with upright keel. The western wave was all aflame, the day was well nigh done. Almost upon the western wave rested the broad bright sun, when that strange shape drove suddenly betwixt us and the sun. And straight the sun was flecked with bars, heaven's mother send us grace, as if through a dungeon grate he peered with broad and burning face. Alas, thought I, and my heart beat loud, how fast she nears and nears. Are those her sails that glance in the sun like restless gossamers? Are those her ribs through which the sun did peer as through a grate? And is that woman all her crew? Is that a death, and are there two? Is death that woman's mate? Her lips were red, her looks were free, her locks were yellow as gold. Her skin was white as leprosy, the nightmare life in death was she who thicks man's blood with cold. The naked hulk alongside came, and the twain were casting dice. The game is done, I've won, I've won, quoth she, and whistles thrice. The sun's rim dips, the stars rush out, at one stride comes the dark. With far heard whisper o'er the sea, off shot the spectre bark. We listened and looked sideways up, fear at my heart as at a cup my lifeblood seemed to sip. The stars were dim and thick the night, the steersman's face by his lamp gleamed white, and the sails the dew did drip. To clomb above the eastern bar, the horn of moon with one bright star within the nether tip. 
one after one by the star-dogged moon, too quick for groan or sigh. Each turned his face with a ghastly pang and cursed me with his eye. Four times fifty living men, and I heard nor sigh nor groan. With heavy thump, a lifeless lump, they dropped down one by one. Their souls did from their bodies fly. They fled to bliss or woe, and every soul it passed me by like the whiz of my crossbow. We leave the ancient mariner, the sole survivor on his ship. Please do come back for part four. <laughs>